Okay, so our next talk is uh, given by Professor Christine Waku from uh, Pontifical Catholic University of Peru. Uh, the title is On the, long uh, on the Low Burn for the Degree of Hypothetical Country Example to the Plain Jacobin Collection. Uh, good evening. Thank you for inviting me to all the organizers. It was nice. Uh, I will share the screen. Well, this is joint work with uh, the brothers Guccione and with Rodrigo, who was my master student. And we started this and, well, it's based on our previous work in various articles that have been published and some are only in archive. So the, the approach we have is very basic, but it goes and goes and goes and goes on. And we have also a computer program online that I will show you that permits to, to compute some possible counterexamples. So, uh, well, I think everyone here knows the definition of a polynomial map. And we have the Jacobian matrix. It is a polynomial inverse. If there is there are two other polynomials, R and S, such that FRS is the inverse. In general, if you, two polynomials are the identity, then the Jacobian matrices uh, multiplied each, uh, with each other gives the identity matrix. So when we take the determinant, we get one. And we define the Jacobian of two polynomials as exactly this determinant. So if it is an inverse, then the Jacobians must be one because these are the only invertible polynomials in K X, J. So this is known. This is the conjecture, this is the converse. If the Jacobian is a uh, constant, then it is a polynomial inverse. So this is very basic stuff and we'll take an example. So we we'll take these two polynomials, we compute the the Jacobian of the polynomials, which is linear in each variable. Okay, these are eight terms. Well, the terms with, with j squared j are zero, x x squared is zero, x to the fourth x squared is zero. And so we get only five terms and they cancel each other and we have the Jacobian is one. So according to the Jacobian conjecture, we must have an inverse. How do we find such an inverse? So, excuse me, we look at the support of the polynomial. Okay, P are the blue points, has four terms different from zero, and has this form, and Q has this form. So, our approach is well, we reduce the, the support of the polynomial, still, we cannot reduce uh, any further. And if it is invertible, then we get X and J. So, the first thing that we would do if we see this example is, well, we take a, a, an automorphism of k of xj and we take uh, phi one, given by phi one of j is j minus x square. So with this morphism, we have that phi one of j, phi one of, of q, excuse me, has only one point j. So, we have reduced the, the support and we reduce also the support of, of P because these two points vanish and uh, P, uh, phi one of P has this support. And the next step is to reduce further uh, the support of P and we apply phi two. Uh, P in fact is X plus, uh, phi one of P is X plus J square. And then we apply x to x minus j squared, j squared. And then phi two and phi one give the inverse of, of, the, of the function, the, the polynomial function defined by p and q. Okay, one can readily compute this. This is r is phi one, phi one of x, x minus j squared. S is phi two, phi one of j is this expression. And this is a polynomial inverse that we are, this is the polynomial inverse that we are searching, okay? One computes the, the composition of these two polynomial functions. 
So P of R and S and Q of R and S. And well, P of R S is R plus S square plus two times S R square plus R to the fourth. And Q of as R is as S plus R square. So it is also easy to see that S plus R square is J. Okay. You see, if you take R to the square, then you have well the opposite of this part. So J is um, S plus R square. So, and then this means that the second entrance is already J, but this is also J square. So we have the first entry is this entry. You have R plus S plus R square. So this is R plus J square and R plus J square is X. So we have verified that in fact, this is a polynomial inverse of, of PQ, of the function defined by PQ. Okay. So, and similarly, one, one can prove that the composition of FRS and FPQ is the identity. So this is the basis of, of, of our method. So we, we, our approach is we analyze and transform the support of the polynomials associated to hypothetical counterexample. Assume the conjecture is false, then we take counterexamples and we analyze the support. And we transform it and try to make it as, as small as possible in, in order to, to get uh, contradictions or some properties of these possible counterexamples. In the words of Heitman, which is an interesting article in 1990. The underlying strategy is the minimal counter example approach. We assume it's false and we look for properties of the minimal counter example. If we find a contradiction, we prove the conjecture or we find an, uh, a counter example. So this approach is the de facto, we search for counter examples and if we can find nothing and can prove that we can find nothing, we have proved the Jacobian conjecture. So, but the conjecture is very hard, so we are very far from proving it. So, uh, what do we, uh, how do we work? We take the, the support, for example, if P is this, this expression, we work with the support, which is much simpler to manipulate uh, conceptually also. And we have Q, Q with, with this, is this square as the support. And then the product P and, P and Q, P and Q has this support. So we would like that, it, that the product has support of P plus support of Q, but usually this is not the case. Some terms can, can vanish, but not all the terms can vanish. In fact, the, the border of the, of the support uh, has to be maintained, maintained. What do I say? What do I want to say with this is the following. If we take the convex full of the, of the support, which is called the Newton polygon of the, of the polynomial, then we have this Newton polygons. And then the Newton polygon associated to the product is in fact the sum of the sums of the Newton polygons. Here, the sum is just the sum of two two sets in in R square. Okay, so this is this behaves nicely. And what about the the Jacobian? So the Jacobian of P and Q has this support. Okay, is this clear for everyone? Wanna if one makes a quick computation in the mind. Okay. Roman thought shows you that this is the Jacobian of, of P and Q. Okay. So the support of this expression is given uh, by this uh, figure. And then, well, it doesn't seem to be very well behaved, but we have the following. We have here the support. The support is contained in the following in the sum of the two supports of P and Q minus one, one. Okay, so here we have the sum of the two supports and we have to 
shift the, the Newton polygon by one to the left and one down. This comes because the, 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 the Jacobian, if you take partial derivative with respect, with respect to x, you go to the left, and with respect to j, you go down. So this is the, the figure. And you always have that the support is of the Jacobian is contained, the sums of the support minus 1, 1. So this is one of the central ideas of, of the approach. And we also look at the at each direction, the principal terms in each direction. For example, if you take the direction minus 1, 1, then the support of P, the support of Q, assume these are the supports, then you have the support of, of PQ, the Newton polygon. I only draw the, the borders. Uh, the principal terms are well behaved. Okay, so the principal term of, of Q times the principal term of P gives the principal term of PQ. Okay, and graphically it's easy to see, it's just the, the sum of the two of the two principal terms, of the support, the sum of the Newton, of the convex hole of the support of the principal terms is well behaved with respect to the multiplication. Okay, so the starting point is just uh, the first point you find if you travel uh, anti-clockwise uh, anti around the, the support. So the... Uh, Uh, here you have the, the starting point of P, starting point of Q. It's just all the, the support of the principal term. And this is the starting point of PQ. And it is the sum of the of these two points. Okay. And if we take another direction, for example, uh, the direction zero one, and then it is well behaved with the principal terms. And here, the, the points that were the, the starting points now are the endpoints of the direction zero one. Okay, if you travel anti clockwise, the first point of PQ that you find is this one, and the second point, the last point is the endpoint. So the product is also well behaved with the endpoints of the of the endpoints uh, corresponding to one direction. So these are the, the, the main ideas that we need that are very basic geometric uh, ideas. But then we have a very nice result, which is the basis of all we, we do in this, in, in this approach, just the following. This is the, the main result. So, this the first reference I have for this result is Joseph in 75, 78, something like that. And so you have uh, you know, this L or uh, rho sigma of P is the is the main the principal term of P in direction rho sigma. Rho sigma is a direction, and we assume that rho plus sigma is greater than zero for this result, then there exists an element that is a polynomial that is rho sigma homogeneous, such that uh, well, this means it is a constant, it is equal to a constant times the principal term of P. Okay, So this result, as I said, was, was known, but not, not used very much. And if you look at the geometric side of this result, we have some additional properties the valuation of f is rho plus sigma. The starting points of, of p and f are either either are aligned, this one is a constant times the other, or the starting point of f is necessarily 1, 1. The same uh, is valid for the endpoints. And the last property is that the starting point of p is cannot be aligned with 1, 1, and the endpoint also. This is this is this is very helpful because it says when you have the the when you have a Jacobian pair that this is the hypothesis if P and Q are a Jacobian pair then the Newton polygon 
cannot have a, a corner on the main di diagonal. This is a restriction which is very useful already. So if you use this result in proper way, then we get the following. We want to have uh, lower bounds for uh, the greatest common division of degree of p and degree in q of q, where p and q are give a counterexample. And then we have the following. If the conjecture is false, then there exists some counterexample. This is trivial. And it is also not so difficult to prove that then the degree of p and degree of q cannot divide each other. If one of them divides the other, then we can reduce the, the size of the counterexample. Moreover, and this was also already known since the last, uh, well, in the 90s, of the last century, then the, the support of P and support of Q are subrectangular, sub which means they are contained in a rectangle. Well, every polynomial has the support contained in a rectangle, but the, the, the corner that is opposite to the origin is part of the support. So this means subrectangular. And there exists a direction such that the, the main terms of the principal terms of P and Q are the, uh, a power of some rho sigma, uh, necessarily rho sigma homogeneous element R. So R to the M is the, the main term of P and R to the N the main term of Q. And since degree of P and degree of Q don't divide each other, N and M are co-prime and greater than one. So this is one condition. The other is the starting point of R is under the main di diagonal and the end point of R is over the main diagonal. Okay, so this is also a condition. And the end point of F is uh, some constant and the endpoint of R, and the constant is between zero and one. Okay, and this conditional direction tells us that the, the vector of that direction is between zero and minus p divided by four. Okay, so let's see some examples because this is a geometric approach, so we want to see some geometry. So the smallest possible case that we can find satisfying these three conditions already give us a, a nice result, which uh, was also known by Nagata. Nagata was the first, 1988. If P and Q is a counterexample to the Jacobian conjecture, to the plane conjecture, then necessarily the greatest common division of, of the degrees is greater or equal to nine. Okay, so this is the R that corresponds. This is the F. So it's some kind of, of, of basic geometry game trying to find R and F. Okay, once you have an endpoint, you, you see, well, uh, the endpoint of F must be uh, in, this, in, in, in this straight line from the origin to, to the endpoint of R and must be uh, in this lattice, in, in, in this integral lattice. So you look for this and and the, the, the first point that you can find is this point, three, six. Okay, and you can continue to search. This is the first point you find, three and six. Here it is. And then you can continue to search and you find many points. So uh, we will restrict to, to points that such that the sum is lower than 42, I will tell uh, later the, the reason for this. So, so this proves that B is B is the, the, the minimum of, of the greatest common division of the degrees of P and Q, or P and Q give a counterexample. So the fact that we only found, uh, find these points already proves that B is greater or equal to nine. Okay, so this is the first step and we are just working with polynomials in X and in J. So how, how do we can discard the case, for example, the, the lowest case, three, six. So we have this case and I will do the, the complete example. Well, not complete, but give 
the main ideas. Well, we, we transform it, as I said, we, we will transform the, the supports of the, of the polynomials in such a way that we get here this gap here below. So that the, the corner, the lower corner of C of R is over the main diagonal. So, and now if you look, if you look uh, with some caution, you see, well, the support here is not an inter, in the inter lattice. Okay, so that is precisely the point because, well, well, how do we manage this? We can show that that necessarily, well, this is a result that is associated to this main nice theorem that R necessarily is a, the square of a, another polynomial. Okay, uh, not the square, but it's of this form, X times the square of a polynomial, of a linear polynomial. So we, we expand uh, our, our ring. Instead of K of X, Y, we add a variable X minus one to the third. Okay, and this can be done in, in, in a nice way and in, in a um, correct way, defining these variables. And then we set set equal to J to the one third. And then we can write R again. Okay, this X, J, to the cube is just set cube. And then this is a linear factor, set minus, well, lambda to the one third. And now what is psi? Psi of j is j plus lambda to the one third, x to the minus one third. And x is, is not to x or x to the one, one third because this new algebra is generated by j and x to the one third. So if you, compute a bit, then you get that set is mapped to set plus lambda to the one third. So, and this, um, this eliminates one of the factors here in, in R. Okay, so if you apply this uh, morphisms, morphism to, to R, we get, well, you see, if you make here the, this is set minus lambda times, well, some, this is just a, the geometric series of well, set minus lambda to one third, okay? And then you obtain this polynomial, but important thing is you get here X set square, okay? And X set square, the support of X set square is just this, this point, okay? Okay, set square is j square x to the two thirds times x is x to the five thirds and j square. Okay, so the starting point of psi of r zero is no longer one zero but five uh, divided by three, comma two. So we have this point. And now uh, the the next step once we have reduced the the support of this this uh, principal term of R0, now we call it R0, then we see we cannot continue with this, okay? In principle, we should get for the next direction in the, in the new polynomials, well, polynomials with X to the one, one to one divided by three, uh, we should get another F1, R1, satisfying the theorem. The, well, we adapt the theorem to the greater ring. So there is no, no R1, F1 satisfying this, okay? In principle, the theorem says for the next direction, you must get this again. And since this, it is the next direction, the endpoint of R1 should be uh, this point, five thirds comma two. And another fact, we also have to be careful because you, you cannot continue this infinitely uh, cutting down the, the, the edges of the, of the support. So at some point, well, this is are the conditions for R1 and F1 that you should get if, if this is correct, or otherwise you have a final corner. Okay, I won't get in much detail because it's, it's somehow technical and I don't think I have time to explain this in, in detail, but you have that this is not a final corner. What is a final corner? I will, 
explain only the arithmetic side of a final corner. So A divided by L comma B is a final corner in this new ring X, J, and X to the minus one divided by L, if L plus A divided by B is greater than one. So this condition is, is needed because you then can construct um, the principle, the border of a, of a counter example. If this condition is not, not need, then, met, then you cannot construct a, a counter example. So this is a condition that eliminates many cases. So for example, the case that I just told you the smallest case, uh, which has the, the, the corner five thirds comma two, comma two, it, it's not a final corner, okay? Because the condition is not met. So this is a very simple condition. And so um, once you have a final corner, then if L minus A over B is greater than one, then you have obviously some integer K that is smaller than this expression, but greater or equal to one. And then you get a Diophantine equation, okay? You get a Diophantine equation for M and N. Remember uh, the degree of P, degree of Q, the quotient is equal to M over N. And R is, uh, the border of, of P is R to the M, the border of Q is R to the N. So these are the numbers. And not every number can, can occur once we have the, the, uh, the, the possible final corner. Only M and N satisfying the Diophantine equation, which is somehow complicated. Okay, if you have k, b, l, and a, you define a sub k, e sub k, then k divided by e sub k necessarily divides n, and m and n must satisfy this equation. Okay, so this is something you get from the geometric properties of a possible counterexample, but we will stick to the arithmetic contents. For example, if, if you take this a over l, comma b is seven over four, comma three. So this is this is a final corner. Why? Well, if you compute L minus A over B, it's a five divided by three, and this is bigger than, uh, greater than one. So in this case, we take K equal to one. So EK, EK here is equal to, to one. BL minus A is five. So we get this Diophantine equation. We, re we replace B, L, and A, and we get this equation. Three times M minus two times N is equal to one, okay? And now M and N must be solutions to this equation. So the solutions can be parameterized by T. And these are the possible solutions for this endpoint. So for the endpoint uh, final corner, seven over four comma three, the possible MNs that correspond are given by this this series. These this, this numbers that are parameterized by by T. So for example, if A0, R0 is, is this one, so A0 is 4 comma 12 and we apply this psi okay then we get this final corner and we just saw this is a final corner so a1 is a final corner we have this condition this is the Diophantine equation for m and n and then we obtain this possible family of possible a family of possible counterexamples for the degrees of the possible of the counterexamples. Okay, so this is the, the the method that we have. So now we have this this uh, we have this these corners that could be corners that were some R could could uh, could exist R and F, but how many can be continued? We just saw the the three six cannot be continued. So the, the points that are blinking are the points that can be continued, okay? Uh, sorry. 
So these are the points that can be continued with um, uh, in this way, with cutting the edge until you get a, a final corner. So doing this, this is what we did in 2014. And this raises the possible, the, the lower bound to 16, lower bound for the greatest common division of the degree of P, degree of Q is at least 16 because this corner that I showed you on the previous uh, slide was has the, the, the corner for 12. Okay, so there are there are less possible corners. Okay. So but since we found this 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 corner, we are stuck in 16. So there has been no progress in in raising this this lower lower bound. But we, we have described this this families of possible counterexample in the following way. So for each for each of these this this uh, for these points we have some chain of, of of edges and chain of directions and we see only short the short chains uh, in, in the following table so that if you cut down so for example the first entry is just what we, what we just saw okay for 12 we had one zero is the, the lower edge. When you cut the, the edge, you get this final corner. You take k equal to one, and you have this family of possible counterexamples. Okay. And well, if you do it with, with these small corners that we found, at the point 520, you have uh, more families here. k can be one or two. Here, I think here k is up to four. So you get many families, in fact, 30 families that are possible. So it's not very illustrative to see the, the tables. So I will say, uh, now we, we have developed, developed some methods in order to eliminate uh, some of these families. One of the methods that we had already in 2014 was the divisibility of higher edges. This is a very, very technical thing, but it uh, enables us to, to discard some of the families. And uh, it looks as, as if one doesn't discard many families, but in fact, it discards, I would say most families, but most of, of longer chains. So for the short chains, this, this, this criterion is not very useful, but for longer chains, it's, it's very, very useful. It's, it discards many, many possible counterexamples. And another method that we developed is to look at the lower side of the Newton polygon. And there, this is not as usual, but it eliminates some of the, of the families that, that we had for the possible counterexamples. And here we have a very interesting app that uh, Rodrigo developed. I don't know, can you see my... Uh, my browser, I don't think so. We'll change. We'll change the the screen I'm sharing. So if you get into this in, into this uh, web page, you can you get this this picture. You can put here a number from one ten to ten to. I will put 41 because I we want to see the uh, the data until 42, lower than 42, and you get all the points, low, low data. Well, these are all the possible points. We are uh, assuming that this is uh, above the diagonal. So the first filter is, well, it's very easy to see that the A and B must be, cannot be co-prime because you know you, you have to to have a um, interior multiple between the endpoint of r and the and the the zero so the they they cannot be co-prime the second filter I'm not, I'm not sure what it, it does i think it, it's useless 
but you have to discuss it because this program is some years old. Then you have the child filter, uh, child filter. So this is if you have an edge that 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 you have cut, can you get go, go further and get the the next edge? And then you eliminate some of these possibilities. Then you want to have a chain, a complete chain that ends at a, a final corner. Then you eliminate nearly all, and you have the same points that I had in the in the picture I, I showed you in, in in the slide. I showed you, and the smallest is this one. Okay, and, and in fact, this is surprising because you can, if you click at one of these points, you get the the edge, and if you click at this starting point, you get here the the second point. If it's green. It generates a family. If you clicked in the green, here is the family that you, you get. This is just this family that we had seen before. So you, you can click at any of these points yeah, after you have applied the filters, and you get here uh, an edge. And well, in this in this case, there are two possible endpoints. Each of the endpoints generates hmm, no families in this case because you have an endpoint here. Okay, here you have the, the family, you have no family. Okay, so ah, because uh, there are no, not all the filters applied. Oh, so A24, let's see this edge, I thought. Now I'm confused because there should be some some result. Okay, let's see this other. And usually you get the families that you can obtain at the green points. I am I don't know why at this point you get no family. Maybe here. And here you get a family of, of possible uh, families of, of counterexamples. So uh, you can get, get here and, and you obtain all the families that are on the tables that I showed you. So this is here also you can get the, this is for the lower side of the Newton polygon. You can get the, the, the points that are possible as, as points below the, the main diagonal. So this was just a, a little commercial for our application now. I'll return to to the so so in, in this web page you get this application that, that produces this in these families that I, I showed you. Okay, so one can do it by hand, but it's not very efficient. So we have we have this computer program that computes all the possible families. So now, but as I said to you, we are stuck because we cannot raise B over 16. So the next, the new goal is a smaller goal, just not, not the, the, the greatest common division of the degree, but just the degree. The maximum of the degrees of P and Q is the degree of, the, of this polynomial map induced by P and Q. And we want to raise this 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 uh, minimum for possible counterexamples. Uh, the bound known is by Mo in 1995. It was 100. Okay, so our goal is to raise it to 125. In fact, Rodrigo, in his master thesis, uh, raised the bound to 125, and now we are at uh, we are already at 108. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, okay, there was a gap in his proof. So we are not at 125, but we will analyze all the possible cases until 125. So why we look at this table? Look here, we want to have all the cases such that uh, the degree is lower than 125. So 125 divided by three is 41 that's why that's big, uh, the reason we had i choose i chose uh, 42 as a, as a as the limit 
Okay, so in, in this family, A0 is, is 412, then the degree is 16 times three, this is 48, and 16 times four, this is 64. So we have here a possible counterexample with degree of P equal to 48, degree of Q equal to 64. If we take J equal to one, then this is five, and this is seven. So the degree of the possible counterexample is 16 times seven is 112. Okay, and all the other uh, small examples have two and three, okay? Because this is the, the, the smallest pair of integers that are co-prime, but bigger than, that do not divide each other. So we have, this is, these are all the possible examples that has, that have two or three. And so uh, we filter this, we have 10 possible counter examples. Okay, remember these two first examples, 64 and 112 correspond to the first family for 12. And then we have 10 possible examples with degree lower than 125, okay? Uh, this mark with red are already discarded by, well, in fact, Mo, <laughs> the, the work of Mo is, is uh, questioned by some of his students and also by me, because he gives details of his computations only in the smallest case, where the degree of, of F is 64. He has uh, this 75 case and 84 case and 99 case, and he gives no details. So his computations are very hard to follow. And one of his students says that there's a gap and well, I, I, I don't understand the whole work of Mo, so I cannot confirm this, but it's very hard to follow. I don't consider that I know the proof. Therefore, we made it in, in some of our uh, articles, we, we in fact computed this possible counterexample and discard these red cases, okay? So there are five cases left. And in the thesis of Rodrigo, these five cases are discarded, but for the case here with the star, there is a problem and we are stuck at this case, but the other cases can be discarded. For example, I, I will say how we discard, well, let's see which method we use. There are three methods that, that are used uh, for this second part of the, in order to, to raise the bound. First, there's a re reduction of the degree, which is somehow a copy of, of the idea that Mo uses. I don't understand what Mo do, uh, did, so I, I cannot say it's a copy because I, I just took the idea and somehow I get the same result, so it is related, but I don't know how. The second method is a differential equation for polynomials, but this method works only for F1. You see, we've dedicated some effort to F1 because we want to raise uh, the, this lower bone from 16, which is corresponds to F1. If we eliminate the family F1, then we can raise the, uh, the lower bone from 16 to 21. And the third method is a method of standard, a standard system of polynomial equations that we develop in one of our works. And I don't know if any one of you knows this Davenport Sanier polynomials. And this is the, the homogeneous part is the, the same problem as the Davenport Sanyana polynomials uh, solve. So these are the three methods that we use and we'll see it in an example. So um, the smallest family, as I told you, is this with 412. And using this differential equation approach, we managed to discard the four, the first four uh, members of this family. Okay, we transform the problem in a problem of a differential equation. Okay, so you see, we, we had this, um, I flipped the, 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 the picture and we'll flip it sometimes. So instead of 412, we have 12.4. Okay, and we have this, this R that we saw in the other pictures. This is the R and we have the F, which is now again flipped. Okay, so there is a, a result which I told you is the divisibility condition that allows us to see that this 
uh, edge, this lower edge is the uh, uh, fourth power of a polynomial. So it's the four, fourth power of the polynomial R1, R1, okay? And so we can apply a, a transformation, a psi, in order to eliminate this, this edge. So only the, the upper corner will, be, will remain. When we do this, we apply this, this psi, psi one, which is J plus some lambda one times X to the minus two. This eliminates this edge. And we obtain this form for the support. Okay, obtain this one for the support. And then we also can see that this upper polynomial is a, is a, a power, is a, a cube of a, a smaller polynomial. And we apply uh, it again, uh, this, this transformation, we obtain this, okay? And now we, now, we are, now we have to restrict to a concrete case. So we take n equal to three, n equal to four. So these are the, this is a possible counter example of the degree 64. As you see here, you have um, 12 times four, 48 and 16. So P2 has degree 64, the same as P. And then we have these two polynomials. And then we, we take the following transformation. We map J to X, X to the three J and X to X minus one. And well, for example, if we take this with uh, for, if we take this for, for example, this point. This point, this point is, uh, sorry. So this point is X to the, uh, count. This is X to the 13, A to the five. And then we mapped into, well, X to the 13, J, A3 to the fifth. And this is equal to X square J to the five. So we obtain this point. Okay. And so each point of the of the of the of this first quadrant is, is mapped into a point into that quadrant. Note also that here we have a negative point. So P2 is not a polynomial, but it's a polynomial and has some negative um, negative power of, of X here. So but after we, we apply C3, uh, Psi3, we obtain two polynomials, Q3 and P3 are actually again in K of XJ. So these are honest polynomials, XJ. So next slide. So now we flip it again, since we are again in K of X, J, we just interchange X and J. And then we have P, uh, P3 in this form. And now we apply again phi two. We just, uh, there exists some constant, mu zero, mu one, mu two, mu three, such that we can eliminate all these edges. And P4 is now, much smaller than P3 has less points in the support. Okay, and we continue. 
And once again, we apply again this C3 that is kind of a uh, symmetry around uh, a straight line. Yeah, so I can, I can draw here. It's uh, so it's this line. Okay, so this is the symmetry line for for C three. So every point on this side comes to a point on the on the other side. I'm confused. So well, this picture is not right because this point should go to a point here. And it doesn't, but the other points are a reflection with respect to this red line. So this is what the what the uh, this C three does. So we obtain from the original possible counterexample P and Q a new a new element, a new pair of, of polynomials Q five, P five, but the the Jacobi is not no longer a, a constant. So it's not a counterexample to the uh, Jacobian conjecture, but can be transformed in a Count into a counterexample, and the Jacobian is uh, well is concentrated on the x axis plus some element here j to the x x to the four. So once we have reduced the size that much, we we just compute if there are possible uh, coefficients of p five and q five that satisfy this equation. So this is the this is the method that uh, more uses and we somehow mimic it okay but we you can do this this reduction for the whole family not, not only for this concrete example so and in effect let's go to the next slide you can uh, this is p5 x5 and you have that the Jacobian of P5, X5 is this expression that we just saw, and you can transform it into a, a differential equation. Okay, this is the, you can compute the, the Jacobian on each level for uh, X4, X3, X2, X, X, X and, and zero, uh, the constant term, and you have these equations, and this gives a, a differential equation for these polynomials, okay? For these five polynomials. And you can, so P0, P1, P2, Q0, Q1 are polynomials in, in J. So we have this theorem, okay? So this, this 16. Uh, so there is a counter example of degree of degree 16, if you have a solution of this uh, differential equation. A solution is uh, A and Q1, two polynomials, such that satisfy this, this equation. So we, I think we, we, we put the problem in the, in the open problem session in Tianjin 2014, and this is still a, an open problem. You can try to, to solve it, but for the moment it's we are stuck with this. So this is this were the efforts in order to 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 eliminate the family with uh, of degree sixteen, uh, greatest common division of sixteen. Then the next case that we that we were uh, dealing with is when the degree is one hundred and eight, a zero was eight twenty eight. And if you if you apply the same method of reducing the degree and applying this transformation of the of the of the shape of the shape of the support, then you obtain these two elements, P and Q, such that the Jacobian is this expression, and that have a nice, a nice uh, not so big uh, support. But well, one can manage to to compute the the for this particular example the 
Jacobian of the upper border. So L01 of P is this, uh, this upper border and of Q and the Jacobian must be uh, monomial, okay? So this is, this was a hard problem and we managed to, to compute it, but that's the only thing that we can compute. So the, this homogeneous system, okay? So we are stuck. This is the example where we are stuck and, and therefore the, the raising the lower bound of the degree of a possible counter example, we have managed only to raise it from 100 to 108. So we have this theorem, the result of all this effort was this theorem. If P and Q is a counter example of Jacobian conjecture, then either the degree is 125 or the degree is bigger than 125 or the degree is just this example we just saw. Uh, how much time do I have left? I guess that's time already. Oh, over time. Oh, <laughs> sorry. So, okay, I, I want to compare this with, I, I thought I had one hour, mm -hmm. 50 minutes only. Oh, yeah, okay. So, uh, I will compare with the counter example of other examples. Well, more we already saw Heitman. He has families that are nearly the same as ours. Li Chung Wan, he treated the family F31, which is degree 96. Then Orefkov as an example with degree of 600, but it is one of our, our family. He has some geometric, uh, geometric object that he can construct. The question is if you can construct it for member of this family. Borisov sent me some of his papers, but he works only with the case degree 99, okay, 924 times three. Pinchuk 21, he is proposing to analyze some object and this uh, a possible counter example that corresponds to this example of our family. Okay, if you take this example, then you get a similar example to which we had. So given the, the record of finding counter example of Sergei Pinchuk, I think one maybe should look into this particular example. So open problems. Well, this is for the for B from 16 to 21. The second study this year. And you can try to generalize uh, this Davenport polynomials approach. So Davenport polynomials, Davenport polynomials originally were tried to minimize the degree of F to the cube minus G square. And nowadays there exists a complete classification of these solutions. But if you try to to, to, to classify the solutions to this problem, minimize the degree of f cubed minus g squared minus f or minus lambda f, I'm not sure. Then you can solve some cases of, of, of these uh, families. All the cases with two and three could be solved. Okay, and the goal is to discard all cases with mn two comma three. And if you can generalize this, then maybe you could prove the Jacobian conjecture. So these are the words in archive. We have uh, all articles are in archive and this is Heidman and Mo, which we cited. Thank you. All right, thanks uh, to our speaker. Any questions? So uh, yeah, what's the plan? Uh, uh, your plan for the for the for the the, the, the difficult case of degree one hundred eight? Have you have you thought about other natural conditions? You know, satisfied by the Jacobi pair or something to rule this case out? Uh, or do you see any hope for for the case one of degree one hundred eight? Of degree eight. Now you are speaking of. This one, 828, nine, 108, yeah, this one. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yes, of course, uh, of course. Uh, okay, so this is, 
uh, this case, or we are stuck. Mm -hmm. Well, the homogeneous system, I can solve it with Mathematica. And I think if I, if I had uh, a supercomputer and I knew how to use it, I could solve this example. So it, this is just, uh, if you have enough computing power, you should be able to solve it, mm -hmm. okay? But the, the terms you get in the homogeneous, if I could understand the homogeneous solution, I could also do it. So it, it is just a, a thing of computing power. It's not, not I don't think that there is one dif uh, difficulty added. It's just, it's just, it's getting bigger and bigger. And at some point your computer gets stuck. So on the other side, if, if you make this Davenport approach, then you could solve it. So this is a possible way. If I had to put my bet on something, I would put it on this Davenport polynomials, yeah. So, because, you know, if you solve this case, then you have the next case. And at some point your supercomputer is also stuck. So there is no, no point in just computing, computing. No. Right, thanks. By the way, it's very nice to see you again after Tianjin conference. Yeah, oh, yeah, Tianjin, yeah. Nice to see you again, yeah, also. And uh, any, uh, yeah, uh, any questions from other people? <laughs> It's very interesting. So actually, I want to do another cherry, another commercial. And well, in the next month, years, I want to do a to 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 a web page in order to explain the method. Uh, so in a pedagogic way, so very geometrical because it's very simple, mm -hmm. and people do uh, do not understand well this 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 basic concept. So. So it, it, it's, I want to, to, to do it and, and this program will be in it. So you can play with this program and get some, some corners. It, it okay. would, be, would be interesting. It would be yes. very, very interesting if you, if you, can, if you can do this. <laughs> yeah, I have already written the first chapter. Well, it's a, a book that will be on our webpage, so. Very, and very nice talk. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I spoke to Arno van der Essen if it, it's worth the pain to write a book. He said, I'm writing the second book, so. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, his second book already appeared. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, it's, a, it's appeared. It's appeared. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's thank our speaker again. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, sorry, I have to go out. Yeah. Yeah. Since uh, this is a uh, uh, last uh, talk, I guess. So let's all thank our organizers. <laughs> yes, for the hard work to organize, you know, this uh, this this session during this hard yeah. time, pandemic time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, uh, thank you uh, Francisco. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, my job is done. Okay. So. Uh, in order to finish, thank you all of you for presenting talks and to, to be here um, attending the conference. See you in the next conference in Injectivity. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>